What are you drawing over there? It's a hypothetical containment field for a frisbee-sized wormhole that could serve as a portal to a parallel universe. Oh, you silly doodlebug. <laughs> you know, a lot of scientists believe that making contact with other life forms would probably not end well for us. It's a frisbee-sized wormhole, Leonard. You could block it with a frisbee. Calm down. <laughs> Do you expect me to build this? <laughs> I expect you to wipe the pudding off your chin, gentlemen. <laughs> Have you guys ever noticed that Sheldon always disappears every day at 2.45? Really? <laughs> he probably just goes to the bathroom. Actually, no, he goes to the bathroom at 8 a.m. with optional follow-ups at 1.45 and 7.10 on High Fiber Fridays. <laughs> it's sad that you know that. Oh, that's just the tip of the sadness iceberg. <laughs> This public calendar, 2.45 to 3.05, nothing. Yesterday, 2.45 to 3.05, nothing. Last week, nothing. Last month, nothing. He never has anything booked during that time. 20 minutes a day completely unaccounted for. I should figure out where he goes. Ooh, this is exciting. <laughs> like one of my classic murder mystery dinner parties. Right, the case of who murdered three Saturday nights of my life. <laughs> Colonel Kuthra Polly in the kitchen with the olive spread. <laughs> it was top and odd, and you guys suck. Hello, Stuart. Hey, Sheldon. Help you with anything? Yes, I'm attending a party this weekend for a 93-year-old woman. Can you recommend a gift? I don't know. Could you put a tennis ball in the end of Excalibur, make a pretty badass cane. <laughs> Do you supply the tennis ball? No. Then no. <laughs> what else? Uh, oh, got this collector's edition Batman utility belt. Maybe she could use it as a wearable pill caddy. <laughs> well, she just looks silly wearing that without the rest of the costume. <laughs> oh, sorry, Sheldon, that's it. That's all I got. No, well, it's not your fault. I've been to the model train store. I've been to Radio Shack. This woman's impossible to shop for. I'd make fun of Sheldon for having girl problems if I wasn't in shock that Sheldon has girl problems. <laughs> now, Leonard, go ahead and mock. It's like my daddy always said, Shelly, women aren't anything but flipping pains in the bottom. <laughs> that's what your father used to say? Well, I took out the bad words and the yee-haw, but you get the gist. <laughs> Look, if you don't want to go to the party, just don't go. You're a grown man. Act like one. Tell Amy you want to spend the weekend having a sleepover and playing video games with your friends. <laughs> yeah, maybe she'll dig it. Women like a firm hand on the tiller. I can never find the tiller. <laughs> I got a book. It didn't help. Yeah, I always thought if I were ever enslaved, it would be by an advanced species from another planet. Not some hotsy totsy from Glendale. I downloaded an app that might be helpful in this situation. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I'm smart as a whip. I should be able to figure this out. Spaghetti okay? It's crunchy. Just the way I like it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think the water was really boiling. It's great. I love it. <laughs> okay, listen, there's something I need to tell you. I've been thinking about going back to school for a while now, so a couple months ago, I started taking a history class at the community college. Oh, that's great. Great, great, great. Why wait so long to tell me? I, just, I don't want you to make a big deal out of it. Why do you think I'd be like that? I get it. You're taking one class. It's nice. Maybe if it goes well, you take another, you enroll. Full time. Ooh, be sure to keep an eye on which credits transfer to a four-year college. You're making a big deal. <laughs> Sorry, you know, whatever. It's all good. Anyway, that's it. I just thought you should know. Am I allowed to ask how the class is going? It's really good. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about the origins of slavery. Turn in my first paper tomorrow. Great topic. I can help with that. You know, there's lots of different perspectives you could take. Economic, sociological, political. Hey, this is my paper, and my perspective is that slavery is bad. <laughs> My professor's black, so I'm pretty sure that's the right answer. Can I take a look? No, Leonard, this is my thing. 
Okay, I get it. Thank you. It's like when I started doing chin-ups. I didn't want you to see until I could do one. <laughs> FYI, really close. Thank you. Now, behave yourself and eat your dinner. Maybe later, if you're lucky, you get to sleep with a college girl. Really? Because I went to four years of college and five years of grad school. That never happened once. <laughs> Bernadette, let's talk through this. No, leave me alone. Perhaps you should give him a taste of his own medicine. Do you have a cousin who you find attractive? <laughs> Amy. Hey, you introduced her to the sleaze bag. I'm just trying to clean up your mess. <laughs> oh, hi. Hi. I need to talk to Bernadette. Well, I don't think she wants to talk to anyone right now. All right. Well, could you at least give her a message? Yeah, sure, I guess. Tell her I'm really sorry, and if she doesn't want to marry me, I get it. But what I really want her to know is that the guy that she's disgusted by is the guy that I'm disgusted by, too. But that guy doesn't exist anymore. He's gone. And reason is because of her. So, if this relationship is over, let her know that she made me a better man and tell her thank you. Thanks. Oh my God, Howard. <laughs> That's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. <laughs> and it came out of you. Howie? Penny has a message for you. I heard. Your voice, not unlike your mother's, travels through walls. Do you want me to go? No. Come here. I'm still really mad at you. I get that. Is there anything else about your past I should know? Couple things, but most of them happened overseas. I'll tell you later. <laughs> okay. So, is the wedding still on? Yeah, the wedding's still on. Oh, thank God. I'm still a maid of honor. Oh, what the hell? This is kind of hot. Please, 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 let me meet Hawking. I told you no. But I said I'm sorry. No, you said would it help if I said I'm sorry. <laughs> and you never answered me. So who owes whom an apology now? Sheldon, you're a condescending jerk. Why on earth would I want to do something nice for you? Um, to go to Jewish heaven? <laughs> Jews don't have heaven. Wait, then to avoid Jewish hell? Have you met my mother? I live in Jewish hell. The intellectual equal. <laughs> you can't be serious. You just, uh, try to put yourself in my place. Imagine, you're the sole human being living on a planet populated with nothing but dogs. And then it turns out there's another human being. Hang on, are you saying the rest of us are dogs? Yeah, okay, <laughs> I can see you're gonna take this the wrong way. Let me try again. <laughs> Imagine you're the sole human being living on a planet populated with nothing but chimps. Get out of my lab. Oh, now they're so much smarter than dogs. Have you seen them on those little bicycles? Get out! How about dolphins? Out! Hey, Bernie. There's my hubby. How's everything going up there? Oh, it's okay. Space is... Beautiful, Earth is beautiful, same old, same old. What's wrong? Nothing. Everything's fine. Howard. The other astronauts are being mean to me. No, what are they doing? Well, like, for instance, the other day when I was asleep, one of the guys went on a spacewalk and glued a big-eyed rubber alien mask to the outside of my window. <laughs> when I woke up, I screamed for like nine minutes. Oh, Howie. You can see it if you want. It's on YouTube. 
Google astronaut screams for nine minutes. Why don't you stand up to them? What am I supposed to say? I don't know. Say, being mean is lame. What's cool is being nice. <laughs> I'll do that when I want to be the first guy in space to get a wedgie. Do you want me to call somebody at NASA? No. My mom already tried that. It only made things worse. <laughs> hey, Ma! Twinkle, twinkle! Your little star is home! Ma, the chain's on the door! Yeah, well, Bernie's not feeling well, so I thought I'd stop by. Tell you about the greatest adventure of my life. See if you can make me feel bad about it. <laughs> uh, okay, hold on, I'm not decent. All right. <laughs> Woman hasn't tied her robe in 20 years. Suddenly she's not decent. You want me to hide in the closet or go out the back? <laughs> you need to whisper. <laughs> I only got one sock. Where's my other sock? Who is that? I told you, it's the TV. Hey, Lego lost the sock. It's hilarious. <laughs> if you're busy, I can come back. Just give me a second. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Dr. Schneider? Oh. Hello, Howard. What are you doing here? Um, house call. You're a dentist. Yes. Yes, I am. I think he's on to us! I want to build a road, but I need wood. <laughs> Do either of you fellas have wood? <laughs> I don't understand the laughter. <laughs> the object of Settlers of Catan is to build roads and settlements. To do so requires wood. Now, I have sheep. I need wood. <laughs> Who has wood for my sheep? <laughs> OK. How do I look? More to the point, why are you doing this? What are you talking about? Did you forget what Penny did to you? It took you two years and defiling my sister to turn that frown upside down. I didn't defile your sister. We had a relationship. I heard you call her brown sugar. In my book, that's defilement. You want to know my opinion? Oh, boy, do I. Sarcasm? No. All right, then. The reason you're fixated on a good-natured simpleton like Penny is that she's the exact opposite of your first rom. Um, it's in her book, Needy Baby, Greedy Baby. That doesn't make it true. It's called nonfiction for a reason, Leonard. See you later. If they ever make a movie version of that book, you know who should play Leonard's mother? Sandra Bullock. Why? Because she's great in everything. Now, where were we? Oh, yes. Does anyone have any wood? <laughs> oh, come on! I just want wood. Why are you making it so hard? <laughs>
Howard and Bernadette, the five of us stand before you as your friends and newly ordained ministers. Louder! <laughs> they all got ordained! They're all marrying us! It's adorable! If you want to hear, come closer! <laughs> Guys, when I look at the two of you starting your lives together, it fills my heart. It fills my heart. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna need a minute. Okay, I'll, I'll go. <clears throat> Howard and Bernadette, I know you two plan on getting married in a big fancy wedding, but when you're in love, it doesn't matter where or how these things happen. It just matters that you have each other. Hmm. <laughs> Problem? <laughs> no. I think the Reverend Hofstadter is making an ironic connection between your statement about love and your rejection of his proposal in the bedroom. Oh, grow up. I, I didn't say it. All right, that's enough from the both of you. Well, he started it. Well, I'm ending it. <laughs> Emergency drill night last night, huh? Uh-huh. Well, how do you do? I'll tell you exactly how he did. <laughs> Readiness, unsatisfactory. Follows direction, barely. Attitude, a little too much. <laughs> Overall, not only will he probably die in a fiery inferno, his incessant whining would most certainly spoil everyone else's day. You know what, I'm so tired, I can't even think straight. I'm going home. Can one of you guys give this nutbag a ride back later? Well, you can't go home. You have to take me to the dentist at 4 o'clock. Oh. Can't you take the bus to the dentist? Of course I can. It's coming back under the residual effects of the anesthesia that's the problem. Uh, two years ago, after a deep gum cleaning, I thought I got on a bus, but somehow wound up on a booze cruise to Mexico. <laughs> they put you under for a cleaning? Yeah, they have to. I'm a biter. <laughs> okay, whatever, Sheldon. I'm exhausted. I'm not taking you to the dentist. Wrong, sir. Wrong. Under Section 37B of the Roommate Agreement, Miscellaneous Duties, you are obligated to take me to the dentist. See? It's right here after providing a confirmation sniff on questionable dairy products. You know what? I am sick of the Roommate Agreement. <gasps> it's ridiculous. I'm your roommate, not your chauffeur. You know, I had better things to do yesterday than drive all the way to the good model train store in Garden Grove because the one in Pasadena has gotten too big for its britches. Well, it has. Ask anybody. I don't care. I'm done. But, uh, hold on. Are you saying that you want to invoke Clause 209? I don't know what that is, but if it means I can go home and sleep, then yes. But think carefully here. Clause 209 suspends our friendship and strips down the roommate agreement to its bare essentials. Our responsibilities toward each other would only rent, utilities, and a perfunctory chin jut of recognition as we pass in the hall. Sup? Where do I sign? Right here. Use your finger. There. Done. All right. That's it. We are now no longer companions, boon or otherwise. We are now merely acquaintances. To amend the words of Toy Story, you have not got a friend in me. <laughs> I'm gonna go home and take a nap. Yeah, well, tell it to someone who cares. <laughs>